amigos, todo bien, ¿no? Sin duda, todo bien. ¿Les gusta estudiar español? Sí, les gusta, ¿no? Good day, friends. We are here again with another session of Spanish. In the last class, we learned how to ask directions and how to give directions to people when someone asks us. We have learned the expression I and also learned the imperatives which are commands, requests, orders, forms used to give advices which are given to the second person singular or plural, formal or informal. Imperatives are also used for first person plural. In today's lesson, we shall learn some more imperatives used in certain contexts. We shall also learn the object pronouns and use them with imperatives. You will notice that the negative imperatives are differently conjugated. Let us look at the AR ending verbs once again before we proceed to other verbs. Let us take the example of estudiar. Estudiar is to study. La profesora a los estudiantes, the teacher to the students. Estudiad, alumnos estudiad, students study, estudiad to all of you. Los padres al hijo, parents telling their child, estudia. Estudia, estudia, study. Alumnos entre ellos, alumnos, students among themselves. Vamos a estudiar, vamos a estudiar. Let us look at another context. Tomar el té, tomar el té is to have tea. So, you are offering someone tea and you say, Toma el té, por favor. Toma el té, por favor. Have tea, please. From these conversations, let us look at the conjugations. Parents to the child says, estudia, estudie, estudiar, estudien, vamos a estudiar. Similarly, toma el té, tome el té. Tomad el té, tomen el té, o vamos a tomar el té. Tu form has a, usted form ends in e, vosotros o vosotras end in ad, ustedes form has en. Nosotros originally has hemos. Like, estudiemos, tomemos, but vamos plus a plus verb in infinitive is used almost in all situations for imperative of the first person plural. And hence, we have said vamos a estudiar and vamos a tomar. Let us now look at the other verbs. Here are some advices. Some advices Anand is giving to his friend Juan, who is going on a vacation. And Anand leaves a note for him. Juan, cierra el gas bien. Juan, cierra el gas bien. Apaga las luces de la casa. Cierra bien. Todas las puertas y ventanas. Baja las persianas. From these advices, we can see that the verbs apagar, bajar are regular verbs, but cerrar is an irregular verb. Therefore, it is conjugated as cierra, cierre, cerrad, cierren. 
Sierra, cierre, cerrad, cierren. The ER and the IR ending verbs function as follows. Comer, for example, is to eat. You drop the S of the tu in the present tense. In tu present tense, you say comes, right? So, in imperative form, it is come. You drop the S. Usted coma. The A, the E or the A in Spanish changes to A in the usted form. Come becomes coma. Comed. Coman. So, the endings are A for tu, A for usted, Ed for vosotros and an for ustedes. Practice the other ER ending verbs in the similar way. You want to say please eat, you say come por favor in informal situation or coma por favor for usted in formal situation. Similarly, the ER ending verbs are the same. A for tu and a for usted. For vosotros, it is id and an is the ending for ustedes. Let us look at the verb escribir to write. Escribe, escriba, escribid and escriban. Practice it in the similar way. Let us look at another conversation to understand some more verbs in imperative form. Now, this is a conversation between a gentleman and the police. The gentleman says, Oiga la policia, Oiga la policia, listen, is it the police? And the police replies, Si, si, diga, si, si, diga, yes. Please tell me, please tell. Señor, the gentleman says, hay un incendio en el piso, hay un incendio en el piso. Policia, un incendio. Incendio is a fire breakout. There is a fire breakout in the house and the police ask, a fire breakout. Donde pasa eso? Donde pasa eso? Where is it happening? And the gentleman gives the address. Aquí en la calle Goya el número 10. Aquí en la calle Goya número 10. Calle street. Calle Goya número 10. And the police says, Conserve la calma y este tranquila. Conserve la calma y esté tranquila. Salgan todos enseguida a la calle, ordenadamente. No usen el ascensor. No se alarmen. No usen el ascensor. No se alarmen. Ahora vienen los bomberos. Ahora vienen los bomberos. And the gentleman says, muchas gracias, señor. The gentleman in the conversation says, oiga, oiga. Oiga is the form of the verb oír, which is to hear. In the present tense, oiga is conjugated as oigo, yo, oyes, tú, oye, Él, él ya usted, nosotros oímos, vosotros oís, ellos, ellas, ustedes oyen. Oír in the imperative is oye for tu form. Oye is the tu form, oye is here. And oiga is for usted form. And oíd for vosotros and oigan for ustedes. 
There is another verb in Spanish which is also similar to oír, it is decir, decir is to tell, it means to tell. In the present tense it is conjugated as digo, dices, dice, decimos, decís, dicen. In the imperative it is di for you. Suppose you want to say tell, tell, you say di, di. If you want to say tell me, in an informal situation you just say dime, 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 tell me. Usted form of oir is diga. Anybody who picks up a phone says si, diga or tell me or speak on. In the conversation we have seen between the gentleman and the police, since it is a formal conversation they both used usted and hence oiga and diga. Let us now see the different imperative forms of desir. Di for tu, diga for usted, decid for vosotros and digan for ustedes. You also had the expressions in the conversations like conserve la calma means stay calm and it is the verb conservar and este tranquila, este tranquila is the expression with the verb estar tranquila to say stay tranquil or in a sense stay calm. Let us look at the imperatives of the verb estar. Estar is esta, este, estar, estén. So, este is be, este tranquila, be calm, estad silenciosos, be silent, estén tranquilos, be calm. Let us look at this micro conversation. Hazme un favor, tráeme un vaso de agua por favor. You are asking somebody, hazme un favor, tráeme un vaso de agua por favor. And the other person says, si, sí, en un momento. Now, the conversation means, hazme un favor, do me a favor. Try me un vaso de agua, get me a glass of water, please. As me is as the verb and the pronoun me, as me. As is the verb hacer, which is to do. As me is do me. Try me is the verb traer which means to bring and me is the object pronoun to me, bring me, try me is bring me. The verb triad is also a verb which is differently conjugated in the first person singular like decir, hacer, salir, etc. Yo in the present tense is traigo, the rest of the verb is conjugated like any other er ending verb traigo traes trae traemos traeis traen so the imperative of the traer is trae traiga traed traigan I hope you got a hang of the imperatives. Let us look at another conversation between Juan and Anand. Anand says, Juan, mañana es fiesta, vamos a celebrar, vamos a cantar y bailar. And Anand is telling Juan that tomorrow there is a party, let us celebrate, let us sing and dance. And Juan says, si, Anand. Es verdad, dime la verdad, 
Oh, is it Anand? Is it true? Tell me the truth. Then Anand says, Si, si, Juan, te digo la verdad. I'm telling you the truth. Tenemos la fiesta a las siete de la tarde. We have the party at seven in the evening. Juan says, perfecto, perfecto, muy bien. You have noticed from this conversation that dime, tráeme, hazme have the imperative form of the verb plus the object pronoun going together as one word. Let me now explain to you a little bit about object pronouns. You have already learnt object pronouns while learning the verb gustar. You have learnt to say me gusta, I like. In the beginning, you have learnt the subject pronouns which are yo, tu, el, ella, usted, nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. Let us now look at the sentence to understand the object pronouns. Anand regala una camisa a Juan. Anand regala una camisa a Juan. Anand gifts a shirt to Juan. Anand is the subject who is gifting and we have two objects, a shirt and Juan who is receiving it. The action of the verb falls directly on the shirt, hence it is the direct object. And to whom it is given, the action of the verb falls indirectly. Therefore, the answer to the question to whom is to John. So, John or Juan is the indirect object. The direct object pronouns are me, you, him, her, it, us, you, them. The corresponding direct object pronouns in Spanish are me is me, te is you, lo is him or it or you, la is him or her or it or you, nos is us, os is you, los is them or you. And last is them or you feminine. So I repeat me, te, lo, la, nos, os, los, las. And the indirect object pronouns are me for to me, te for to you, le for to him, to her, to you or to it. Nos is to us. Os is to you, les is to them or to you. Imagine you, your friend has a dictionary in his hand and you want it. So you say, da me lo, da me lo, da me lo. Give it to me. After the imperative verb, first comes the indirect object pronoun, then the direct object pronoun, and let us relook at the example. Da me, da plus me plus lo. Here, lo refers to the dictionary, the masculine singular. Suppose you are referring to a feminine object, you say, Dame la. Both the direct and indirect object pronouns always come attached to the imperative form of the verb. Always remember that in order to maintain the original stress of the verb, a written accent is often put on the vowel. If the command has more than a one syllable, a written accent is required when one or more pronouns are used. In the expression dame lo, the accent falls on a of da. Hence, it is pronounced as da melo, da melo. Compra melo, buy it for me. Hacedlo, la profesora a los alumnos. Do it, the teacher is telling the students. 
You will be learning more of object pronouns when we do lesson on shopping. For now, you are just introduced to the object pronoun with reference to the imperatives. In this part of the session today, we shall learn the negative imperatives. You know that the negation in Spanish is done by putting a no before a verb. In the similar manner, the no comes before the verb which is in the imperative form. Let us look at some sentences. Canta por favor. No cantes. Canta, sing please. And you want to say don't sing please. No cantes. Another important expression is por favor no fumes aquí. Por favor no fumes aquí. Please do not smoke here. No hables en voz alta. No hables en voz alta. Do not speak in high voice. Have you noticed that the affirmative and the negative forms are different here in imperatives? The negative forms follow a pattern. For AR ending verbs, it changes to E or E. Canta, no cantes. Cante, no cante. Cantad, no canteis. Canten, no canten. For ER and IR ending verbs, it is the other way, that is, the A changes to A. Come becomes no comas, don't eat. Escribe becomes no escribas. Coma, no comas, escriba, no escribas, comed, no comáis, escribid, no escribáis, coman, no coman, escriban, no escriban. The pronouns which come attached to the affirmative imperatives come before the verb in the negative imperative. Like comelo becomes no lo comas. Escribela becomes no la escribas. Dámelo becomes no me lo des. Don't give it to me. No me lo des. Now, dime is tell me. And no me digas is don't tell me. You may find it little confusing with the negative imperatives and with the pronouns. You need to practice them and you will get a hang of it. You will enjoy more and feel like, like a native because imperatives are used a lot in everyday communication. Practiquenlo, practice it. No se preocupen, don't worry. Adios, cuídense, cuídense, take care. Hasta luego.